Welcome back to Heroes of the Faith, a show where we are inspired by the lives of the saints so that we can become saints ourselves. I'm your host, Deacon Isaac Longworth, and a little while ago I was getting my hair cut at a barber shop, and I was talking with the guy who was cutting my hair. And this conversation went a whole lot deeper than just chatting about the weather or something like that. This guy actually started sharing pretty vulnerably about his life, about his past, uh, especially about the things that he regretted. Now, I won't get into all of the things that he was sharing with me, uh, but it was some pretty dark stuff. And at the end of, of his sharing, he said to me, you know, sometimes I lay awake in bed at night and I think to myself, could God really forgive me for all of the things that I've done? For this whole life that I've lived, could God forgive me for this? And it was this really beautiful moment where he was sharing this, this thing that was on his heart. And I quickly told him, the answer is yes. There is no sin that God can't forgive. He is able to wash away a whole life, a whole history of sin in an instant. All that he's looking for is for you to turn to him in faith and repent of that sin and seek his forgiveness and he will forgive you. And he was really encouraged by this. And we continued to talk more about salvation and Jesus. And it was just this powerful moment to show that there is something in the human heart that when you feel guilty, that when you feel shameful about your past, that there is a longing for someone to forgive you. There's a longing to be made right with God. Now, the reason that I share this story is because the saint that I want to tell you about today, Saint Moses the Black, he went through something very similar in his life. Moses was born around the year 325 and he was of Ethiopian descent, but we don't know anything more really about his early life other than that he ended up being the slave of an Egyptian government official. So he's a slave of this, this politician, this government official in Egypt. And at a certain point when he's an adult, his master kicked him out of the house because Moses had such a bad character. Now, the sources on his life don't go into what exactly Moses had done to make his master kick him out. Um, perhaps it was stealing things. Maybe he had killed someone or attacked someone. We don't know what it was, but it was bad enough that this master was willing to lose the free labor of having a slave in order to get this guy out of his house. So whatever it was, Moses was a really bad guy. And whatever it was that ended up getting him kicked out, he did end up entering into a life of theft and murder because he joined a group of bandits. Now, these bandits, these were bad guys. These were the gangs of the day. They made their money by attacking and robbing travelers along the road, by stealing from homes and businesses, breaking and entering. Basically, anything illegal that you could make money from, these guys would do it. And it didn't matter how violent they had to be to get the job done. Now, Moses physically was a huge guy. He was extremely strong and eventually he earned the respect of the group, probably by fighting his way to the top. And he became their leader, the leader of this group of bandits. And for years, Moses and his gang terrorized the region of Egypt that they lived in. They stole, they kidnapped, they tortured people. They were even willing to kill if it would make them an extra buck. And so for years, Moses lived a life of total depravity. All of the money that he stole from people, he spent on alcohol, he spent on women. He didn't care about anyone but himself. He was willing to hurt people because violence and theft were just his way of life. And Moses knew that what he was doing was wrong. He had a conscience, but as he killed and stole and hurt people, he just kept ignoring his conscience and pushing that guilt down so that he didn't have to deal with it. Now, according to legends about his life, Moses at one point stole sheep from someone and he stole enough sheep that the local authorities actually sent out men to catch the thief, which forced Moses to look for a place to hide in the Egyptian desert. But however, he ended up in the desert. He ended up finding a Christian monastery where he spent some time watching the monks who lived there. And despite himself, he was pretty impressed by these monks, even though their life was so different from his. 
These Christian monks lived a life of poverty as opposed to Moses who stole everyone else's money. They were obedient to their superiors, whereas Moses was this proud, arrogant leader who had fought his way to the top of this gang. They lived lives of chastity and purity, whereas Moses lived a life of anything but that, a life filled with lust. And they were a peaceful community of monks. They lived in peace with each other and their neighbors, whereas Moses lived a life of violence. Their life was literally the opposite of what Moses was living. And yet Moses, when he watched these monks living out their lives, he saw that they had a joy and a peace that he didn't have in his life. Even though their life looked really boring and strange in comparison to his life as kind of this adventurous bandit on the road with his gang, he couldn't deny that there was something weirdly attractive about their detachment from all of the pleasures and all of the goods that this life seemed to offer. And so he ended up talking with them and they told him that they were Christians and he didn't know what Christianity was. He himself was some kind of pagan. He had worshiped the sun God like his master had, but wasn't really a part of his life. But they told him that they followed the teachings of a man named Jesus and Jesus had claimed to be more than just a man that he had actually claimed to be the son of God. And they sat down with Moses and they told him the story of what Jesus had done and what God had done in human history. They told him that there is only one God who had created all things in nature and that he had designed everything to have a natural order and a beauty, that he had written the laws of nature into everything that he had created. Now, God had created human beings in his image, which meant that human beings could reason they could freely choose things. They were higher than animals and that God wanted to be in relationship with his creatures, with man, with women. And he showed people how to live good lives by writing his law in their heart, which means that man knew what it was to choose between some things that were right and things that were wrong. God had written that law in their heart by their conscience. Now, when I say God had written a law in their heart, the monks explained this doesn't mean that God was some kind of an authoritarian God, but that as a creator, he knew what would be harmful for his creation. And so he wanted to protect man from that. So God was basically saying, you know, follow the way that I've designed for you to live. My law will keep you safe. My law will keep you happy. I gave you a conscience, which means that when you act against my law, when you act against nature, you will naturally feel guilty and shameful because that will signal to you that you were wrong in acting against this natural law that you have been built into. However, we as human beings, the monks explained, all of us have freely chosen to break God's law. And they told Moses, as a result of that, when we sin, when we do wrong things, we feel the guilt of those choices. So when we steal, when we lie, uh, when we hate other people, when we are lustful towards others, when we do any of these things, they prick our consciences because we're going against the law that God wrote into our hearts, into our very nature. It's like we're breaking the manual that the owner gave us for how we work when we sin. But God didn't want to leave us in this position where we're trapped in these sins, trapped in this guilt, trapped in this shame. So God wanted to rescue his children from that. And so what he did is he sent his son, Jesus, to come to earth and to die in the place of guilty men. Even though Jesus had never broken God's law, he was perfectly obedient. He died on the cross in order to save those who had been disobedient to God. And so because of Jesus, the monk said, we can be forgiven of our sins. We can have our guilt and our shame washed away because for those who believe in Jesus and try to model their lives after his teaching, God promises that he will save them from their pasts and give them grace to live brand new changed lives that we can live as whole human beings, no longer acting against our nature through sin, but that we can live according to God's design for the world which is what is truly good for us. Now, as Moses listened to the words of these monks sharing with him, he felt something moving in his heart that he hadn't felt for a very long time. 
because all of the wrong things that he had done, all of the things that he had been pushing down for so many years, they started to bubble to the surface. These memories started to surface and he began to feel guilt for all of the years of his life that he had wasted in sin and evil. He thought of all the times that he had robbed people, where he'd stolen what didn't belong to him, where he lived a life of selfishness. Moses thought, wow, I've thought only of myself for years. I abused my body with partying and feasting and alcohol. I've used countless women as objects. That God had designed men and women to be united in marriage for life and build a family, but I've been going around acting like an animal with no self-control. I've attacked people. I've hurt people. I've even killed people. What have I done? And he was just so full of guilt, so full of shame for his past. And the monks were quick to assure him, look, Moses, if you are truly sorry for what you've done, then you can turn your life over to Jesus and he can make you brand new. The monk said, look, all of us have our pasts too, but Jesus has saved us and he can do the same thing for you. Are you open to that? And Moses said, yes. Moses repented of his life of sin. He was baptized as a Christian. And because he was, you know, a pretty committed guy right off the bat, he wanted to become a monk right away. He was like, sign me up. I'm a Christian now. Uh, Let me become a monk and join your monastery. But the monk said, okay, well, hold on a minute, Moses. Wait just a second. You've just become a Christian. Uh, I get that you want to join us, but we want to see that you've truly changed your life. We want to see you practice a virtuous Christian life for at least a few years before you're able to join us. Because they noticed he still had a lot of pride, a lot of anger, and a lot of baggage from his former life. Things don't just change overnight. And so Moses agreed, even though it was difficult, he agreed and he began praying and fasting with the monks. He would go the extra mile in doing chores to show them that he was obedient. He would make the long trip to the well in the middle of the night to fill up water jars for the monastery. And he would do everything he could to serve them to show that he really had changed his life around. However, just because Moses had become a Christian, it didn't mean that suddenly everything became easy. The devil didn't want to lose his hold on Moses. Moses had been living a life of sin for a long time under the control of the devil. And just because he had become a Christian, the devil didn't want to let go of him that easy. And so he began to tempt Moses and Moses began to crave his old life. He began to crave the adventure, the drinking, the women. It wasn't just an easy thing to start over brand new. He still had a lot of these desires, these sinful, twisted desires working around and wrestling in his heart. Even though he was praying a lot, even though he was really trying hard to live according to God's plan for his life, he had lived a sinful life for so long that it it had warped his thinking and it was very hard to let go. Now, Moses wanted to be perfect overnight, right? He wanted to just move on from his life of sin and just become this super holy saint right away. And so he got discouraged. He got discouraged because he was thinking, look, I'm a Christian, but I keep falling back into my old habits. Plus, he had been the ringleader of bandits for years. So that meant that he had been respected and feared. And now these monks were asking him, to surrender control of his life, not only to God, but that he would be obedient to these monks who would become his superiors. That was a tough pill for Moses to swallow. It hurt his pride. It stirred up his anger because he did not like being told what to do. He was used to being the boss, but rather than giving up, even though it was difficult, Moses doubled down. He committed to being even more intense in his relationship with God. He worked even harder to train his soul to leave sin behind. And so what he would do is he would eat almost nothing, just a little bit of bread every day in order to get control of the other desires of his body, to force his body to listen to what he wanted it to do. He would pray up to 50 times a day. And he would fall asleep during prayer. And so he would force himself to stand up so that he couldn't fall asleep, which is really encouraging for all of us who are trying to pray and you fall asleep. Well, guess what? Moses struggled with that too. And that's why he would stand up to force himself to stay awake. 
And so the devil saw that Moses wasn't giving up. If anything, Moses' resolve got even stronger. And so the devil kept tempting him in different ways. He would give him tempting, lustful dreams. He would give him nightmares of demonic armies coming to attack him, trying to break Moses down. But in response, Moses said, fine, if you're going to interrupt my sleep, I'm just going to stop sleeping. And he started praying all night in order to keep the devil away. And even when he did fall asleep, because of all the prayer and the closeness that he was receiving with God, he began to dream angels coming to defend him from the demonic attacks. And so finally, after many years of prayer and fasting, Moses finally was able to be healed of his temptations from the past and live a truly holy life. He had victory over Satan and all of his evil spirits. And seeing the change in Moses, the monks recognized he's ready. And they welcomed him as one of their own. Now, it was a good thing that they did welcome Moses into their community because one day, four robbers actually came to the monastery to loot them. These bandits thought, look at these weak monks, these religious guys. We'll just be able to go in there, beat them up, and steal all of the stuff that they're hiding in there. These are going to be easy picking. But Moses, still a huge guy, he defended the other monks. He went to town on those four bandits, beat them up, tied them up, and brought them into the superior and said, what do you want me to do with them? You can kind of see uh, the vestiges of his early life, asking the superior, you know, what am I supposed to do with these guys now that I've caught them? And the superior quickly said, Moses, don't hurt them, let them go. And so he let them go. But these bandits were so impressed when they heard the story that Moses had been like them before he had joined the monastery. And they were impressed by the mercy of the monks who agreed to let them go, even though they had planned to rob them that some of the bandits stayed and became Christian monks themselves. And word began to spread through the community. And Moses became known not just by the other monks, but even by people outside the monastery for his gifts of holiness, prayer, and healing. And so people started to come to the monastery asking for Moses to pray with them for their illnesses, for their diseases, for their injuries. And Moses would pray for them and God would heal them through his prayers. He also had a real gift for delivering people from demons, probably because he had fought demonic forces in his own life and won victory over them. And so he had some helpful tips for helping people defeat the demons in their life. And so crowds sought him out from all over the place. They would come at all hours of the day. They would interrupt his prayer, but rather than being impatient with them, he received them all whenever they came night or day, and he would show them love, making up for his selfish past by thinking about other people and their needs rather than his own. Now, he was still conscious that he had temptations to be prideful, no longer being prideful that he was a thug leader, but he could be proud of being holy in the eyes of other people. And so when all these crowds were coming to find him, Moses tried to avoid the praise of people. And an example of this is one day he was walking on the road and he met this pilgrim who was coming along and he asked Moses, I'm coming to see the holy monk Moses. Do you know where I can find him? You know, Moses knew he was coming to see him. And so he told the pilgrim, you know, don't waste your time. The monk Moses, he's not as holy as everyone says that he is. He's actually pretty useless. Uh, he's pretty worthless. Don't waste your time trying to find him. So the pilgrim went away and returned back to his friends and family and said, yeah, I was on the road and, and I was looking for Moses, but uh, this guy on the road told me he's, he's not actually that great. And they said, really, what did he look like? They're like, well, uh, he was uh, dressed in monk clothes and, you know, this big uh, black man and pretty strong. And they said, that was Moses. That was the monk Moses. You missed your opportunity to meet him. And so uh, Moses was very focused on making sure that people didn't think he was holy, protecting his virtue of humility because he didn't want to fall into pride. Eventually, his brother monks chose him to be their abbot, which was like their leader, their father figure. And even though he was the abbot, he didn't rule with an iron fist over the other monks. He ruled mercifully over them. He was patient when they messed up because he remembered how difficult it was when he first was trying to become a monk. There's this one story where one of the monks broke one of the rules. And so Moses was invited to a meeting 
to discuss an appropriate punishment for this monk. And Moses refused to attend. And so when they asked him to come again, Moses agreed, but he took with him a basket full of sand. And the sand was kind of leaking through the basket everywhere he went. And when he arrived at the meeting place, the other monks asked him, Moses, what's up with the basket? Why are you carrying a basket of sand around? And he said, well, just like this sand, my sins are running out behind me and I don't see them, but they're, they're just running out everywhere I go. But today I am coming to judge the errors of someone else. And so the monks realized that Moses was saying, look, I know how many sins I've committed. I know how my sins follow me. And you want me to come and judge someone else for his sins? And so when they heard Moses say that, the assembled brothers realized the wisdom of what he was saying, and they forgave the monk without punishing him at all. Now, eventually Moses was ordained a deacon, even though he didn't think he was worthy of becoming one. And when the bishop put the white robe that a, that a deacon would wear over his head, it's rumored that Moses responded, this is only outwardly white because God knows that I'm still dark within. Even after all these years of holiness, he still remembered the darkness of his past life that could still be in his heart. And he was so thankful that God had called him out of that. And he was amazed that someone as unworthy as himself could be ordained a deacon and clothed in this white garment that symbolized holiness. But Moses truly was a holy man. He was so loved and respected amongst his brothers that they actually wanted him to become a priest. And so they made that request to the local bishop to ordain him. Like, you got to ordain Moses. He deserves to be a priest. And the bishop agreed. He agreed that Moses was a holy man. But privately, the bishop decided that he wanted one final test of Moses' humility before he made him a priest. And it was a kind of a weird way of doing it, but this is what he did. On the day of Moses' ordination, when they were all gathered there in the church, the bishop insulted Moses in front of everyone, telling the monks, who is this Ethiopian that you've brought to me? Get him out of here. He's not ready to be a priest. And obviously, Deacon Moses was very embarrassed by this. He was angry at the bishop, but he gained control of his emotions and he humbly left the room quietly. Now, impressed that Moses showed no sign of defensiveness or pride, even in the face of this kind of public shaming and injustice, the bishop quickly sent the monks out of the room, go and bring Moses back. I was just, I was just testing him. He is ready to be ordained a priest. And so Moses was brought back in and ordained. Now, obviously this isn't the best kind of test to do. I hope that the bishop doesn't do that to me when I'm ordained a priest in a couple months, but there you go. It was a different time and Moses passed the test that the bishop put before him. Now, now Father Moses, he served as a priest for several years until he was 75 years old. And when he was 75, he revealed this startling word to the brother monks. He told them, I'm going to die soon. I'm going to die soon because of all the years of violence I've lived, I am going to die by violence. And he took that from uh, the words that Jesus said in Matthew 26, verse 52, where Jesus said, all who take up the sword will perish by the sword. And Moses thought that was applied to his life. For years he had lived by the sword, and so he believed he was going to have a violent death as a result. And true to his word, a couple of bandits attacked the house shortly after. And Moses encouraged the other monks to flee, but as the superior, he stayed behind with the monastery where he was murdered in cold blood by these bandits. And it's very ironic that the man who had formerly been a bandit, been a thug himself, died at the hands of a gang of bandits. But he died a changed man. No longer was he a thief. No longer was he a murderer. All of that had been washed away because he was a holy priest who had been saved by Jesus. Now, Moses the Black is a man who proves that no one is beyond saving. Literally no one. The worst sin imaginable, years of depravity, can be washed away in an instant by the mercy of Jesus. And Moses is a testament to that. He shows us that saints aren't perfect people. Saints are not perfect people. They are imperfect people. They are people who have sinned, who have done wrong things, but they are people 
who have accepted the free gift of salvation from the perfect Jesus. And it is Jesus who gives them the grace to live a changed life. That's what happened to Moses, and that's what could happen to all of us, which is why Moses is such an inspiration for us to become saints like he was. And so let's pray for that now. Let's pray for the grace to become saints like St. Moses the Black. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. St. Moses, you lived a life of great evil before you met Jesus. Your life was full of, of thievery, of lust, even of murder. But you said yes to the gospel when you heard it, when those monks told you about God, and you invited Jesus to come into your life and to change your heart. And so we pray right now for all of those who seem so far away from God, those who are our friends, our family members, that they would encounter God's mercy just like you did. Because we know that no one is a lost cause in Jesus' eyes. That even the most hardened and depraved sinner can be won over by the love of God. St. Moses, even after your conversion, you struggled for years to let go of the sinful habits that you had been trapped in. But you never gave up. You kept fighting for holiness. You kept praying for God's help until he rescued you. Help those who are stuck in patterns of sin that they just can't seem to escape, especially those who are listening in right now. Help them to experience God's power, break through in their life, and bring them the freedom that they are looking for. Help them to move out of the darkness of their past, not dwelling in regret and shame and guilt over their past, but to live a new life in the light of Christ, who is strong enough to save them. St. Moses the Black, pray for us. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.